What do you do when you experience body aches, pains, headaches, colds, or cramps? Most people try to relieve the annoying pain. In fact, 94% of people surveyed took pain relievers to alleviate the pain. The three most common reasons why people take a pain reliever of those surveyed was headaches, cramps, and body aches. But how exactly does the medicine work? How does it know where to stop the pain? That's something that I've always been curious about, and the majority of people surveyed are pretty interested. That's what we're going to cover in this video, but first we have to look at the underlying issue of pain to help us understand how a little over-the-counter pill can help. Pain is used to describe a wide range of unpleasant sensory and emotional experiences associated with actual or potential tissue damage. Nerves in the body serve to warn us when something is acutely dangerous, such as a hot surface or when our body needs rest or repair. They're kind of like alarms aiming to keep us safe. Thousands of pain-sensing nerve endings can be packed into tiny spaces in your fingers, between the vertebrae of your back, and just about everywhere else in the body. The nerves that sense and transmit pain are called nociceptors. There are more in your fingers and toes where injury is more likely than in other parts of your body. Although nociceptors are present in most parts of the body, they are not active at all times. Nociceptors have a certain threshold that must be reached before becoming activated and sending signals to the brain. Because of the threshold, things as pushing down on a table or feeling a rock don't really register as pain. But if you stub your toe on a chair leg particularly hard, it will come across the nociceptor's threshold and they will become activated. The threshold can be raised or lowered by certain tuning chemicals such as prostaglandins. When cells become damaged, they release chemicals that alter the nociceptor's threshold, one in particular called arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid is converted into prostaglandin H2 by the enzymes COX-1 and COX-2. So as enzymes, COX-1 and COX-2 have specific sites where other things can bind to create reactions. Arachidonic acid fits perfectly in the active sites of COX-1 and COX-2, allowing it to become metabolized into prostaglandin H2, which lowers the threshold of the nociceptors. Once the nociceptors are activated, they send signals through the peripheral nerves to the spinal cord, which then travel to the brain. The signals are processed at each stage of transmission, with the brain arguably playing the largest role in how pain is consciously experienced. So now that our brain is telling us that something is wrong, we start looking for solutions to ease the discomfort. Like I said earlier, 94% of people take pain relievers, and 73% specifically take it when their brain tells them that something hurts. The most common pain reliever that people surveyed said they took is ibuprofen, so that's what we're going to look at now. Ibuprofen belongs to a class of drugs called non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Breaking that down, non-steroidal differentiates these drugs from steroids, and it also reduces inflammation along with acting as a painkiller and fever reducer. Ibuprofen is a non-narcotic or not addictive, so it's available from a local pharmacy. It is most commonly a pill that is swallowed orally. Once the ibuprofen is inside the body, it finds the COX-1 and COX-2 enzymes active site noted earlier. The ibuprofen sits in the active sites and prevents the arachidonic acid from entering. Using an analogy, the ibuprofen would be the goalkeeper that keeps the ball or arachidonic acid out of the goal or active site. So, much like the goalkeeper keeps the ball out of the net, the ibuprofen blocks the room for arachidonic acid to enter its goal, which is COX-1 and COX-2. When the ibuprofen is blocking the active site, the arachidonic acid can't change into prostaglandin H2, which lowers the nociceptor threshold and causes you to feel pain. In this way, the ibuprofen keeps the threshold up so that the nociceptors don't fire to the brain and signal pain. The ibuprofen isn't binded permanently to COX-1 and COX-2. It can be spit out by the enzyme, which gives it a relatively short life inside the body. That's why it's okay to take one to two pills every four to six hours. But how does ibuprofen know where the pain is? Well, it doesn't. Once the ibuprofen is in the bloodstream, it is carried all throughout the body. It affects painful areas the same amount as normal areas. Now, that kind of sounds like your whole body would just be a sense of numbness, but it isn't. Because the threshold in unaffected areas is still at a high level, the ibuprofen only raises the threshold where it's been lowered in areas of pain. As a quick review, pain is noticed when nociceptors fire signals to the brain. Prostaglandins, such as arachidonic acid, lower the threshold of nociceptors after being converted to prostaglandin H2 by COX-1 and COX-2. 
NSAID drugs such as ibuprofen interfere with the reaction where prostaglandin H2 is created, keeping the threshold up and preventing the nociceptors from signaling pain to your brain. So now that you know how ibuprofen works, the next time you slip, trip, fall, or cramp, you'll know exactly what happens when you reach for that pill bottle in your medicine cabinet. Pretty magical, eh?